Hey guys, um, so this is to recap the Mongol DBQ how-to essay um, that we have started in class, but unfortunately I will not be here for as you wrap up um, this assignment. So it's a big one, so I want to make sure that you have all the resources you need so that you can finish up. All right, so just to review, we're in Unit 2, so it's Topic 2.2, The Mongol Empire and the Making of the model, uh, Modern World, and we are moving on to our DBQ essay steps. So as a reminder, a DBQ is a document-based question. Um, we are going to use an evidence-based argument, which means we are going to make a claim and back it up with facts, so evidence that are provided in the documents. Um, you will be given seven documents, but you only have to use six to get the two full points um, for the assignment. You must also cite your documents. Remember we talked about you can begin your sentence in document one, this happened, this happened, this happened, or you can just say this happened and this happened, parentheses, document one. Um, so in the next, we're going to talk about the College Board rubric. So you have a copy of this rubric in your uh, packet so you can see how we're going to grade your essay together. Uh, the first point is our thesis, which we've been working on. So I can give you one point for a thesis and then one point for your contextualization. So that's two points in that introductory paragraph. It's a big deal. So remember, contextualization is going to give the big picture, the background information to introduce me into the more narrow section of your thesis. So you can think of it kind of like as an upside down triangle. The context is more broad and you're bringing it down into talking about your thesis, which is going to be really specific. Uh, part C, you can get one point for using three documents or two points for using six, and we are all going for the six points, uh, for the two points, so that means you're going to use all six documents. Um, you also get one point for evidence beyond the documents, that means it's something from your brain. So something you took down in notes, when you took notes from the Mongols, or you read in your MSCO book, or you heard in your crash course video, or in your atlas. Basically anything that you know about the Mongols that you can work into your argument that does not come from the documents. Our next two points are the analysis and reasoning points. The one point comes from sourcing the documents, so we're going to review the happy document uh, sourcing chart that we did so that you can source a document in each one of your body paragraphs. So just to recap, your thesis and your contextualization are in your introductory paragraph. So we're looking about three to four sentences to introduce and to contextualize, and then your thesis will be about one sentence. Your evidence is going to be spaced out over three body paragraphs. Our goal is to use about two documents per body paragraph and then use your analysis and reasoning sourcing your happy charts to um, source one document per paragraph, just so you can split it off in one paragraph so not super huge intense sentences and then the other ones are a little shrimpy. Um, the last point is our unicorn point, right? The one that's kind of rare. We're not going to focus on that for our first essay, but just know it's there. Um, this is going to come into play more when we start focusing on actually making sure we get to the conclusion and having a more complex um, argument. But again, that's something we're going to work on probably more next semester. So for our very first one, we're not going to pay too much attention. All right. Remember, in class, the first thing we did was circle the essay prompt because you can write me a beautiful essay. And if you don't address the prompt, I can't give you any points. All right. There's no half points in AP and there's no crying in AP. Uh, so you got to make sure we are doing what the rubric's telling us to do and we are addressing the question. So our essay prompt for this set of documents is using the documents provided and your knowledge of world history. Analyze the degree to which the Mongol Empire affected societies of Afro-Eurasia in the 13th and 14th centuries. So just to go down to our time period, right, this is Unit 2, 13th and 14th century, so that's where we are. So pretty much all of the content we have covered so far is falling into that time period. Remember, Afro-Eurasia is talking about Africa, Europe, and Asia. And we have talked a fair amount about the Mongols and how they are uh, interesting, scary, and the exception to a lot of rules. So you are going to be trying to address how the Mongol Empire affected uh, those three main continents. All right, so our first step, like we did the first day, was to make sure that you're filling in your note chart for your document. One of the things that takes the most time is having to go back and reread all of those documents. That can take a long time. So we want to make sure that we're being effective and we are taking those notes the first time around so we don't have to go back and reread everything. So you'll notice out by each one of your documents, you have a chart and it has a section that says 
the Mongol Empire affected Afro-Eurasia by, and then this can be seen in the document where. So while you're reading each document, you are going to be taking a note to know exactly how does this document fit into this? What are the Mongols doing to or affecting, impacting the other con or the continents and the people that they are co they've conquered? And then this can be seen in the document where, so you can underline or highlight and just make a note of where that's covered. So again, we're going to be looking for overarching themes that link our documents together in the ways that Mongols are in fact affecting. Uh, Afro-Eurasia. So after you go through all seven documents, which should be done by now, but if you need to go back over them, you do still have time to do so. The next step was to do the happy chart. Now, if you recall, I had you do just one happy chart the first day because I wanted to wait to hold back on the second two. Uh, because I wanted you to have your groupings uh, for your documents and for your subclaims so that we could get on our way to write our thesis but also so that, that we could try and keep our essay balanced by having two documents in each body paragraph and one document happy source in each one. So I didn't want you to do three documents that you were all going to use in one paragraph or, you know, so it wasn't clunky. So we just did one. Um, we went over that again today and we seem to get it. But just in case, to recap, the way we are analyzing our sources is we're basically looking for their point of view and how, what they, who they are and what they're doing and where they are and when they are, are impacting what they're writing. And if that makes it somewhat less credible or maybe having some sort of slant or bias or some sort of just difference that's impacting what they think versus what the truth is. Oops, sorry guys. So the H for happy stands for historical context. So we gave the big context already in our big uh, or in our introductory paragraph, right? So this is just like when was this document written? Why was it produced? What else was happening at that time? The audience is who it's written for. So remember, we had one of our questions from our last exam where we had to analyze the point of view about that hoity-toity rich guy who was writing about all these peasants and how they were doing these uprisings and it was just, he looked down on it, he was kind of being snotty. And one of the things we had to analyze was the fact that his writing was for other rich guys who were in the higher classes. And so because of that, he wrote probably a little bit nastier than he would have if he was writing for everyone to read. So we need to pay attention to who's expected to read this. The first P is the point of view or the author info. So this is where we're really kind of wondering, who is this guy? Is he reliable? Is he telling the truth? Uh, does he have the whole side of the story? Does he have any prejudices that might uh, limit him? Um, so all that kind of stuff into who the author is. The second P is the purpose. What was the purpose? Was he writing a letter? Was he Is he documenting history? What's going on? And then the why is a little bit of a stretch, but why is this important? So make the significance through connections. You're going to analyze the evidence. You're going to say, okay, all this stuff added together. Why does this matter? How could this help my essay? Is this person trustworthy? Why is it not trustworthy? And going from there. So remember, you're going to have three of these done, but you have the first one done, and I want you to have that one done and then go to the next one and have your categories and subclaims before you do your second two happy charts. Because your categories and subclaims are going to be your grouping of your documents. Basically, your three ways you are answering your, the uh, your uh, prompt in your thesis. So remember, we want to have three things that go into your thesis that kind of answer why. And that's going to be your grouping, your subclaims, most like we did when we talked about Islam in India, when you either were given the evidence and you had to come up with a subclaim or given the subclaim and you would find the evidence, or when we did the Aztec mini queue and you were given the documents and you just had to make the groupings, right? So in each group, you're going to have your topic uh, for your body paragraph one, two, and three. You're going to tell me which documents you're going to use and what document are you using to happy source. So after you figure out your first one, where you're going to put your first, first source document, you'll put them in there and then you'll choose two or you'll choose one from each other group. All right. So then you'll go back and do your happy for the other two. Then, after you have your subclaims, you're really on your way to having your, out, your outline and your essay going into place here. So our general outline 
is going to include five paragraphs. The first one is the introduction. Again, you're going to have your three to four sentences of contextualization of your big picture, narrowing it down to your thesis. Remember, I really like for you to use all of those once you have a complex thesis. And you do not have to cite any documents in the introduction. That's just straight up facts. Body paragraph, sorry. Um, body paragraph one, um, body paragraph two, and three are all going to have the same format. You're going to lead off with your topic sentence, which is going to be about your grouping. Then you're going to try and use two documents and then have your one happy sourced uh, document in there. And then if you have outside information, remember you only have to use it once, but you want to pepper it in as you can. Um, as a reminder, you do want to use six total documents. That means if you use um, documents one through five and then you use document one twice, that doesn't count towards six. So you really got to use one through six or two through seven, whatever. You got to use all of them, but you can use them twice. It just doesn't count towards your um, document count. So then we're going to have the conclusion. Uh, this time we're definitely going to focus on the conclusion. I know I told you as we get to our timed essays, conclusions aren't as important. But you definitely need to restate your thesis, kind of conclude, wrap it up there. Um, while we're writing this, again, this is the skeleton of your paper. So this is the really important part. But we're not going to worry if our writing sounds clunky. It can almost sound kind of list-like. And, you know, we want to work on that and improve it. But for right now, that's fine. As long as you're giving me the facts, then you're in good shape. So what do I need to turn in? So remember we talked about this is a big uh, test grade for you guys and a lot of that's going to be based on the actual pre-planning and less on the overall um, essay. So I don't want you to panic and think, oh my god, my essay is no good. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's going to be okay. So the first thing you're going to turn into me is your packet, which is going to have your document notes and boxes and your happy charts and your early grouping chart. All right, then your outline. Your outline can be on the packet, but that is a little bit small. So if you want to do it on notebook paper, that's completely fine. You can definitely staple it up to it. And then the last part is your essay. It's going to be a handwritten five paragraph essay on notebook paper. I do not want it typed. I want it handwritten um, because when you take the AP exam, you're going to have to handwrite. Um, so when I when we get back from fall break, we are going to meet and I am going to grade your essay to you. Uh, so we'll meet one on one. I'm going to grade your essay out loud to you using the college board rubric in your packet. And we're going to talk about your strengths. We're going to talk about uh, basically your glows and grows. What did you do really well and what do you need to work on? So this video is meant to recap the expectations for your DBQ, how to write our first one we're writing uh, because I will be in the desert and I will not have any service. I won't be able to help you out um, over the next couple days. So I just want to make sure we're here, got this done. You know, we did check in. I would really like to th see your thesis <coughs> so I can help you and make sure you're on the right track. But if you do have any questions, um, before I get back, you can definitely email me and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, I'm excited to see how your essays turn out.